Hello viewers, we are here with you once again to talk about the issue of the human being's health linked to his emotions, to his psychic life. An integral psychosomatic medicine is advancing more and more in this perception, in these discoveries and in perfect relation and harmony that exist between the emotional life and the organic life. And this energetic is what unifies all things, which is what Dr. Kepi writes about in his books in regards to his research in that everything that exists in the universe is in vibration and everything works in energetic resonance, a vibratory resonance. And any type of disturbance that comes to exist in this resonance provokes deformities and illnesses. Whether in the psychic order, organic or social, and even economic. So when one thinks, oh, why are we going to concern ourselves if the forests are being destroyed or if they are detonating an atom bomb under the ocean? Yes, everything is in resonance with the universe. And what happens with our neighbors, what happens to forests, what happens to the sea, all of this is going to affect the vibration in our own organism. But what we have never paid a lot of attention to is how our emotional life affects the vibrations of our cells, of our organism, and even how it affects the vibrations of nature. So if we are emanating a distorted energy, we are going to jeopardize ourselves and also jeopardize the environment in which we live. More information about this integral psychosomatic study can be obtained through our publications in our books by accessing our home page and our sites. The home page is www.trilogia.ws and you can access our sites because this subject of integral psychosomatic medicine permeates through all of our activities. In our courses, in our lectures, the activities at our spa in the south of Minas and our psychotherapy. We perceive the human being as a being, a vibration, who is in resonance with the universe. Therefore, he affects all areas. And in this sense, it is important to really stop the destruction of the world. I remember when I was a child, or perhaps this is something with children in general, when a child falls on the ground, their hands, of course, touch the ground, and then the child puts them in his mouth, and the family gets horrified. Oh my gosh, be careful, there are dangerous bacteria there, and you can get sick. Or else another one, be careful, wash your hands before you eat, like, uh, be careful with the external world. This is a confusion that paranoid people make, blaming the outside world for all of one's problems. So now we imagine, for example, flying bacteria in the air, dangerous bacteria that will kill people. Or one sees another human being as if he were a giant walking bacterium, putting the entire world in danger. Do you see? What humanity is living today is something terrible because it blames everything that exists on something outside of one's body, outside of oneself, creating the danger of destroying or killing everyone. And who is one of the worst who is responsible for this mess? I'm going to show you now. Let's see. Louise Pasteur. Louis Pasteur was a French researcher. He wasn't a doctor. He didn't have any clinical experience. That is, he didn't treat sick people or deal with illnesses. And he introduced this idea of dangerous bacteria, these terrible microbes. Even in the movies they show this with great vehemence, as if we were in imminent danger of suffering, as though animals were appearing in the world and destroying everyone. Take a look now at this chart I've made for you. The Great Deviations of Science First, Louis Pasteur, who placed illness as if it were attacking from the outside. What is it that I can affirm for you? 
that there is no illness at all that attacks from the outside. All illnesses come from within. Even Jesus Christ, God on earth in the form of man, said this, that everything evil comes from the human being's interior, from his evil thoughts, from his bad feelings, ideas, aggressiveness. And this is what generally makes the human being sick. It's not something that comes from the outside. Now, take a look at another person in second place here who has generated an enormous confusion in science. Take a look at who I'm referring to. Albert Einstein, who stated that energy is coming from matter. This formula, energy is equal to the speed of light, E equals mc squared, is totally erroneous because matter is already the result of energy. And so, it's not matter which generates energy. Therefore, electricity, for example, is a sub-product of energy, and not that electricity makes energy. In the same manner as Pasteur, Einstein is also totally wrong. He is entirely mistaken, just as Pasteur. You might find what I am saying to be somewhat strange, but science is like this. It can show the mistakes of other scientists. Let's take a look now in third place at another man who did a lot of harm in the history of civilization. Charles Darwin placed the human being as a descendant of an amoeba. Observation. These are the three elements that most deviated man from reality. Just look. It seems to be a joke. Imagine an amoeba turning into a rhinoceros, or becoming an elephant, or indeed turning into man. And Charles Darwin's theory is followed by many people. I'd like to show you now the origin of human illness, where this origin is. Let's see the chart. The origin of human illness is illnesses that do not arise from the outside, as Pasteur attributes. You know, I feel really let down by this deception. So much care has been taken, so much so that humanity has generated a bacteria phobia, a phobia related to bacteria. Where does this guy come from? He's a danger here. Where does this bacteria come from? From here? We can't live here because it's full of bacteria. For example, this coke bacillus. It's in the air flying around us. And we do not have tuberculosis because of this. To the contrary, seeing bacteria in a metaphysical, philosophical way, we see that it is an element that helps the human being. All bacilli help the human being. Now, it becomes dangerous when the human being becomes dangerous to himself. Do you know that French warrior Napoleon Bonaparte, in fact, he was born in Italy, he said that it was much easier for him to fight on the battlefield, fighting against an enemy, than it is to fight against his own evil tendencies that he had. The interior battle. Exactly. Avoiding the wickedness in the interior of bad feelings, of absurd thoughts, of destructive ideas, these type of things. So, notice that inside the human being, there are these terrible monsters that appear to be on the outside. Let's see the chart again. What else do we have? Illnesses arise from the human being's interior. In third place. What is fundamental about illnesses are the uncontrolled emotions and ideas. For all the ills of humanity arise from man's internal conduct. I have the idea that Christianity, true Christianity, is to avoid the evil that stems from within. For example, theologians say, or, or rather, they don't say, they don't deal with this subject anymore, this extremely prominent issue, which is the human being's interior. But the human being needs to see if he isn't good, if he isn't just, if he isn't courageous with goodness, whether or not he is interested in handing over his life to goodness. This is what God wants. 
Even the issue of the religious reform, Luther said that the great problem in those days was it in the 16th or 17th century, around that time. He said that what is really important is to see the interior man. I'm not saying that he didn't have mistakes as well, which people in general have, but Christianity, in my understanding, is being good, is being beautiful and truthful, which are the pillars of metaphysics. Now, take a look at another diagram about the real origin of infirmities. The real origin of illnesses. First, illnesses don't arise from bacteria and viruses. It is occasioned by weakened cells due to the psychological stress. The issue, for example, of stress is not something new. Béchamp already talked about this and said that bacteria were not harmful to the human being and that what causes illness to the human being is when he enters a period of stress and much tension. Now, in a world such as we live in, who lives without tension? Just to have a normal financial life to support a home, people have much difficulty. Or look at the traffic jams, the desperate hours spent in traffic to get to work, and to a job that not always pays well. So, who is really to be blamed for the present situation of humanity? It's those who form this group of economic power. Take a look in third place at what I've written. Making the organism weaker and more susceptible to any problem, to stress. A psychologically balanced individual would be immune to illnesses. We'll be right back. Even if we don't have a lot of consciousness, we can perceive that life is divine. We live in transcendence, whether we accept it or not. We still live in an earthly paradise, except we don't accept it. In fact, we attack what is most beautiful, good, and real. Consciousness of our envy and inversion will make it possible for us to return to this paradise we've abandoned. We don't need to build it. We just need to accept it. The Stop the Destruction of the World Association was created to bring about exactly this consciousness. We are working to return the world to goodness. Join us. When Dr. Kepi referred to the last program about every illness arising from the human being's evilness or from his unbalance, it comes from one's heart based on Christian affirmatives. And I would like to translate this into a simpler and a more popular television language. For every illness that the human being has, as he's already explained, arises not only directly from our intentions, from our psyche, but indirectly. For example, many people counter-argue, saying, what about congenital illnesses? Or, are they illnesses that are caused by agrotoxins and even from atomic radiation. So the person immediately counters saying an affirmative that leads the individual to interiorize and see that, no, but what can my emotions cause that is dangerous for myself? I would then say that all illnesses are caused directly or indirectly from the human being's conduct through his heart. Because wars, intoxications, even abuse of transgenic elements, problems that our ancestors had, evilness, all this, all of this has an influence on our nature. 
We could say that everything that comes from nature, that God created, is good, is beautiful, and is the truth, per se. But due to evil actions, to envy, arrogance, that the human being has, we became distorted. We have, in fact, destroyed our habitat. The environment that we live in, taking our polluted waters and created unnecessary wars, illnesses, etrogenic, that are the origin of doctors, medicines, and hospitals. Of the stress in our social life, all of this comes from the human being's interior, and as a consequence, they are seen in this way. I'd like to consider this chart about the etiology of illnesses. Take a look here. Due to bad feelings and ideas, cells become deformed. You might at first think that this seems impossible, but what the individual thinks, what he feels, is what makes him, even organically, physically, either in a certain way or another. Isn't there a saying that says that until 40 years of age, a person has the face he acquired from birth, and after 40, he gets the face he deserves? And what does this saying mean? That when a person is very evil, he begins to transform into an ugly person. For example, women, they can, if they accept being good, they can keep themselves beautiful even up to 100 years of age. They would be those sweet old women. And also physically beautiful. So, this image of witches in children's storybooks is due to this. These are evil people who, when they grow old, become ugly due to the bad feelings and evil thoughts they have. Now, let's see the next one on the chart. Following this, microzymes, particles, transform themselves into viruses and bacteria. That is, they deform themselves. So my idea of neurosis, for example, is that it is the denial, omission, or destruction of reality. And this is what the human being is doing to his organism. Due to his own harmful, evil ideas and thoughts, he destroys. He is able to deform his own internal cells, those cells that look pear-shaped and elongated. These are cells that, once deformed, are able to spread all over the organism, throughout all organs. Let's see now in third place. By proving that illnesses arise from the interior and not from the outside, as Pasteur said, his theory was created incorrectly in order to sell medicine. So, how could Pasteur understand how an illness works if he wasn't even a physician? He was a biologist, worked with microscopes. Now, I would like to show you who are the individuals most responsible for humanity reaching such a state as we are currently witnessing? Where does this come from? It comes from the social economic power that only wants profit, profit and nothing but profit. These are people who are excessively paranoid. Freud wrote about the phases that everyone goes through since birth. The first phase, up to two years of age, this is the oral phase. A child puts everything in his mouth in order to experience, to know. So he only wants to breastfeed, his life is food, he wants to eat and drink milk, these things. From age two to four, he enters into an aggressive phase. This is the paranoid phase. He bites, hits people. He doesn't accept his friends, the other children. He's already attacking the family, his parents. It's this type of paranoia that can germinate. Look what a strange word in this context. Germinates. People who are focused on money, 
money, money, are people who are stuck in this mentality of two to four years of age. It's strange, isn't it? But it's true. Later, from four to six, comes the genital phase, when a child becomes more interested in the libido, sexual things. And after that, there should then come a more mature phase. Now, for example, Bayan, who was an English psychoanalyst, said that the nobility were people that were more linked to this genital phase, because they would even marry each other in order to be able to conserve the power they had. Now, those who dominate the world are the people who have the social economic power and do not accept any other power other than theirs. And so what happens? Why is it that politicians are being strongly, so furiously attacked right now? Because these economically powerful are trying to finish up with the social, political power, so that those with economic power can enter and openly dominate the world. Look closely. We are in a very dangerous phase right now. Because if these people take over the power, it will be the worst type of dictatorship that the world could possibly have. So let's see now, who are some of the most deadly individuals for humanity with their respective families? Take a look. David Rockefeller Apart from this David Rockefeller in relation to the issue of the economy of petroleum, he also had a tremendous strength generated through the Rockefeller Association. And this association dominated the world. For example, the majority of the medical schools worldwide were founded by the Rockefeller family. And with what objective? To generate profit to sell medicine. Now, another person who helped Rockefeller in a really big way, take a look at who it was. Andrew Carnegie. In the United States, he has a theater named after him in New York. Carnegie Hall, and he was an American millionaire who was only interested in money. He also wanted medicine that would sell so as to generate huge profits, even if it were something scathingly harmful for the people. So nowadays the people eat tons of food. Drugs, for example, these prohibited street drugs, have this bad name, but they are just like medicines. Medicines are also drugs. That is, the effect can be a lot more negative than positive. Now, who was it who greatly contributed to the destruction of Bechamp's correct idea about medicine? Take a look at who he was. Abraham Flexner. In the early days of the United States, there were around 150, 160 medical schools. And since not all of them followed this same economic social standard, this Flexner closed down more than 100 of them. So only a few universities were left, 8 or 12, in order to follow this new, very wrong orientation of Pasteur. So this was terrible for humanity, including for us nowadays. Everyone is frightened. Where does this swine flu come from? Where did this little pig come from to do so much harm? It's nothing like that. This is all wrong. Take a look at another malefic individual. John Pierpont Morgan. Morgan. Now, I've written a work about a new society that wouldn't be either renegade capitalism, because look, when I talk about capitalism, I'm not talking about the non-existence of capital. Every entrepreneur, every individual has to have his capital, has to have a certain economic life so as not to have to borrow money from banks and then have to pay exorbitant interest rates. Because those who borrow money from a loan shark asks for 100 
and has to pay back 300. Ah, like this, they live to pay others. This is loan sharking. The same thing happens in the stock market. The individuals who are there are loan sharks, who only seek profit and jeopardize the rest of the population. I'm going to show you now a chart about what generates happiness for the human being. So firstly, what would it be? An action related to goodness, to what is beautiful and truthful. This is obvious in itself. And secondly, an attitude of helping and living in relation to one's fellow man. In function of one's fellow man, note this well, not for oneself, but live in function of others and not be so in love with oneself, but love the other human being, mainly those who need us, in third place. Hold an interest in spiritual values. The real reality consists of living these three elements. So, to end our program, I would like to show a chart about what is happening in humanity, because, of course, we cannot ignore the action of certain spirit beings. So, consider well what I have to say about Lucifer, whom so many people follow, thinking that demons are able to generate something good. Take a look in first place. Fundamental consciousness. Humanity has chosen to be the children of a crazy angel, of Lucifer. So, if Lucifer and the demonic angels are crazy, that cannot be changed, but they need to be avoided. And secondly, this is the reason why arrogance is dominating the world. And thirdly, at the same time, this perception has been erased from the memories. Observations taken from the Bible about what Christ talked about. Which is fundamental, and we cannot forget this. So, till our next program.